Pollution-free, noise-free, EVs are set to be the future of the automobile industry. But energy giant JSW Energy abandoned its plans to enter into the electric vehicle manufacturing space. JSW justified the decision by saying, uncertainties in connection with the electric vehicle business are higher than expected, which is why after careful examination, we have decided not to operate in this business any further. In this episode of Tech at Work, we drive deeper into the electric vehicle market in India, the opportunities and the challenges. We have Mahindra Electric, the pioneers of electric mobility in India. I'm your host, Sri Matandulkar from CNBC TV 18, and we're in conversation with Mahesh Babu, the CEO of Mahindra Electric. Uh, Mahesh, thanks so much uh, for joining in. You've been in business for close to about 10 years. You were the first ones to enter the electric vehicle market in India. I want you to comment on the JSW Group statement that uncertainties are higher than expected. I think I will not be able to comment on them, but I can comment on Mahindra's behalf that any new opportunity will have challenges. I think Mahindra, as Mahindra, we have been working both on opportunities and looking at how to mitigate challenges. And we believe that the future of uh, mobility is electric. Let me pick on the point about the challenges then. This FAME 2 policy, which was announced by the government a month back, it has provided incentives to the tune of about 10,000 crore rupees in the next three years. But it comes with very stiff localization riders. So the minimum localized content has to be 40% for buses and 50% uh, for the, you know, the vehicles or the passenger vehicles. Uh, is that going to be a big challenge? I think uh, we'll have to understand the context in which the government of India is talking about uh, electrification. India cannot do electrification by importing parts. That's very clear. The intent is very clear that we need to move towards localization. I would say as Mahindra uh, being a pioneer in this space, we are the one who are uh, fit into most of the localization. Our battery management systems, our battery pack, and even powertrains now we are planning to do ourselves. So I think while the numbers are only an intent to start with, I strongly believe this will be reviewed. Uh, the intent is very clearly that uh, we need to build the growth of EV by making in India. I would say not even just making in India, we need to bring IPRs and technology developed in India. That will be the next step. So what percentage of Mahindra Electric's uh, content is imported right now? If you ask me, our various vehicle between three wheelers, four wheelers, we are close to 50% plus in localization. Just tell us, currently in India, which part of the ecosystem is developed in terms of uh, being able to manufacture uh, by itself? And where is it that we need to import currently, say from countries like China? See, uh, if you look at India, I think battery packs, which is uh, the battery management system, the integration of battery pack together has developed very well. Uh, most of the manufacturers are now talking about battery packs being made in India. We need to depend on cell. I think it is also there in uh, mobile phones and others. The cell being a, a chemistry and a, a technology, it needs intense, intense uh, uh, investment and a lot of huge opportunity here. Uh, the lithium ion cell, what is used in a uh, car, is very similar to one uh, which is uh, used in the mobile phones. I think India has to look at not, not just the manufacturing of cells in India, not only for auto industry, to look at uh, other industries as well. You said in the three-wheeler and in the four-wheeler space, Mahindra Electric um, has indigenous content to the tune of about 50%. What exactly do you import? 40 to 50 percent, 40 to 50 percent. If you look at our powertrain, the motor is made in house, uh, the battery pack is made in house, the power electronics, the chargers are made in house uh, for the four wheelers. The three wheeler industry is just picking up. We are the first one to launch the three wheeler trio auto. Uh, the four wheeler industry is there for the last uh, decade and above. So it depends on the aging of industry. The percentage of localization will come uh, when you have industry for long. Uh, so on hence uh, the three-wheeler industry has just started so it's between 40 and 50 percent now I'm sure it will go to um, close to 60 percent in next three years. So these localization riders will not impact Mahindra Electric? I think uh, the more clarity is needed on these riders I think uh, not only us uh, as a Society of Indian Automotive Manufacturers uh, EMG group we have engaged with the uh, uh, government of India particularly Department of Heavy Industries and uh, we are getting more clarity on this because uh, uh, there is a very clear intent of phased manufacturing program. 
uh, where government of india is talking not just about percentages this year but talking about what content needs to be localized over a period of 3 years because the fame too is for 3 years this is the first time a policy is being run for a longer time you said uh, india does not have sufficient cell manufacturing capabilities right now what else is imported i think uh, other than cell um, if the volume is there everything can be made in india uh, but this will take volume you have to look at segment and then decide what needs to be done for example two wheelers two wheelers how much is the volume and then based on that uh, the suppliers particularly technology manufacturers will invest four wheeler as i said that uh, most of them are uh, localized uh, except the cell the motor controllers are right now not being made locally but i believe that in a year or so uh, the motor controllers and the power electronics uh, uh, will be made local uh, so the the movement will be based on volume i think with fame 2 with a clear target of volume uh, the you have to look at localization what is starting today uh, we'll have to look at the end result of three years. What India will be three years from now when the fame, uh, I would say, uh, fame uh, um, objective is achieved in three years' time. We have to look at that way. Uh, if the local manufacturing starts, I believe that the uh, uh, local ecosystem will build on uh, R&D. But the local ecosystem will develop when we have volumes. As of now, the Indians, you know, the Indian market does not have volumes. You've been in business for so many years, but I understand. Mahindra Electric up until now has only sold a total amount of 14,000 EV vehicles. Yeah, see you have to look at uh, the sector and its potential. EVs today is, uh, uh, is a, a rising sector and it's a disrupting technology. Uh, we believe that uh, you will have a substantial upside on this technology in mobility in next 5 to 10 years. So we'll have to look at a long term view because uh, EV is going, is the need of the hour for the country for the industry and for the consumer. I think the three of them needs a technology which is sustainable, clean, and which will solve many of our economic issues and social issues. We have to look at uh, EV growth in a way that how we knit it with the ecosystem and how it makes economic and social sense for the society. The interesting update, in fact, I read about EVs is that in Norway, in the month of March, 58% of the new vehicles were actually the electric vehicles. Uh, but of course, Norway is a very small market, but the numbers in US and China are also much higher than what we have in India. Let me run you through uh, some concerns that Indians have on the EV market in India. One, of course, is the upfront cost. It's significantly higher than uh, the internal, com you know, the combustion engine or your regular cars. Um, you know, how much higher is the cost right now and how much can you bring it down by? The upfront cost of EV between uh, various segments uh, uh, lies somewhere between an, uh, an increase of 30% to even almost double the price in some of the segments. Uh, this is because of uh, basically what we are using battery, which is energy stored into the system. But if you look at the operating cost, if the operating cost is uh, almost uh, much, much lower. I would say uh, one-fifth of the regular operating cost of a gasoline or a diesel. So uh, when you run a vehicle longer um, and, and more, I think it makes sense. That's why we are saying EV will make sense in four-wheelers in fleet public transport vehicle, let's say buses and three-wheelers, are the primary uh, first uh, targets. So if you look at uh, these segments, uh, when you run more vehicles, the total cost of ownership will make sense. So it will come very close to the electric vehicle. With FAME, what has been announced uh, with the FAME subsidy, I think it, it almost close to break even uh, when compared to uh, conventional fuels. So the operating cost will take away the initial uh, initial investment. The upfront cost will uh, has been coming down in the past 10 years, and I believe the cost will go down over 10 years, not in the same rate of last uh, last decade, but to some extent. Uh, but you'll have to look at what's happening on the regular conventional fuels. The regular conventional fuels, uh, the Euro 6 uh, is coming now in 2020, and uh, um, it will put pressure on the uh, cost of the existing technology. At the same time, with volume comes in EV, the cost will come down. So we believe that between 2022 and 27, this is a period in which cost of parity will come. Uh, this is predicted by many uh, agencies. And we also believe between 2022 and 27, it will become cost parity. But when it becomes cost parity, the total cost of ownership will be much, much better when compared to regular fields. What is the cost of battery right now and how much can it come down by? 
See, the battery cost uh, on different segment will uh, is being talked about between uh, $180 to $250, somewhere around that, the battery pack, depending on the complexity of the battery pack uh, on, on the segment. Uh, the, the prediction says by 22 to 27, when this cost parity comes, the battery uh, cost will come between $100 to $120. So that's, that's the prediction going forward. What about on uh, the range, which is the, uh, the number of kilometers the car can run on uh, one charge? Uh, you know, what is it currently? How does it compare with a conventional car? And can the range go up for electric vehicles? See, right now, if you look at a four-wheeler, uh, it's around uh, 140 to 150 kilometer range uh, is being uh, popular in the market. And it's meeting most of the needs in, inside the city. Uh, but in uh, by 2020 and 21, we are expecting the range to go about um, 250 to 350 kilometers range, and uh, uh, when that comes, I think it will have much more flexibility uh, for the consumers within the city to use uh, an adapt electric vehicle in a much larger way in a four-wheeler segment. But in the three-wheeler segment today, whatever we launched about 130 to 150 kilometer range, uh, much meets the need of the fleet because fleet, the range should not be a problem because the fleet operates in a defined route and you can always have a captive charging station in those areas or even a public charging station in those areas which can cater to the need to frequently charge. But just purely for retail, uh, the number of charging stations that are there currently and any estimates how many charging stations India will have? I think charging station is one of the important things which needs to be developed in India. If you look at what happened, I think uh, even in FAM2 there is a fo clear focus on charging station to have a 3, three kilometer by 3 kilometer grid. Uh, there are plenty of new players have entered uh, the space. Uh, because uh, government of India has announced uh, charging is no more a sale of electricity, it's a service. Uh, so there are pl uh, private players who are now coming and investing on charging infrastructures. I think uh, in next five years, uh, there is going to be a healthy quantity of charging stations, particularly inside the cities. Mahesh, currently the EV sales by Mahindra Electric stand at 14,000. Um, not annually, but up until now. What can the number go to? See, I will not be able to share about the future target, but what I'm saying is in the last two years, we have doubled our volumes, and uh, uh, we are looking at this year with fame clear two policies coming in, which is very favorable to the three-wheeler sector uh, and also to the four-wheeler fleet. While we would have preferred to have the uh, subsidy even for the private segment, but I think uh, the fleet segment is most of our sales are. So uh, we strongly believe that uh, the adoption in four-wheeler fleet, three-wheeler, and the buses is going to be the primary focus by the government. And our products are aligned towards this, and we will be uh, looking at a um, significant growth in the coming year and next three years. Break up this volume of 14,000, how much has been sold for public transport, i.e. buses, how much to fleet operators, and how much to private owners? See, most of our 70% plus of our sale is for uh, public and fleet operations uh, because the EV makes economic sense uh, in a fleet operations. Uh, private players are very small because the private player initial cost of acquisition is high and hence uh, there are very few customers who wants to contribute to the society and the environment uh, want to buy it and I think many of them are very passionate that number is growing. Another cause of anxiety is that um, you know the battery technology is also evolving very fast which means five years hence if the technology has changed the car in a way becomes obsolete which brings down the resale value of the electric vehicle. Your comments. See, I believe that the storage technology will keep changing. Like uh, uh, even the existing cars have BS3, BS4, BS6, and the, and the emission technology is improving. Similarly, you will have a battery technology, storage technology uh, uh, getting improved. If you look at uh, a resale of the EV car, when the, when nobody knows this technology, I think the, uh, the, we had challenges initially uh, when we started our sale on even financing resale value. Today, I think the ecosystem has built up well. If you say our vehicles, uh, almost 100 vehicles have crossed uh, uh, 1,75,000 vehicles uh, till now, 1,75,000 kilometers till now. So this has given confidence in the systems. But as you rightly said, uh, right now the ecosystem is not developed enough to ensure or evaluate the resale value of the EVs. But, uh, but I believe that it will evolve over a period of time. 
I want to again come back to uh, the upfront cost bit because while I take your point that it's expensive to buy, it's cheap to run, Indians do care more about the upfront cost. Currently, 30% to double. Uh, that's how much higher an electric vehicle costs compared to the conventional car. You said it will come down. By how much do you think it can come down and how will it come down? See, what will happen is uh, um, today, if you, we all know that in auto industry, when the volumes comes up, uh, the manufacturing cost comes down. And, uh, and the whole uh, investment comes in. Today, uh, the technology of EV, whether it is a battery management system or a motor controller or a power electronics, is being done in very small numbers. We all know that in electronics, if you do in large numbers, the prices come down. So if EV is going to be an electronically controlled and software controlled systems majorly, uh, volume will play a vital role. That's what we are saying. So we are seeing that uh, there is, um, potential to reduce cost between 30 percent in next three to four years and if that is the delta in some of the segments it will become viable uh, to have a break even. For the vehicles which are uh, almost double there are some um, ecosystem being developed uh, to reduce the battery size and have a range extenders or a swapping systems uh, to reduce the cost. So there are a lot of innovations happening. This technology has evolved and we are learning a lot from the market. Yes, and as you pointed out, with the BS6 uh, emission norms coming into effect 2020, the cost of a car will also go up by 8 to 15 percent, which will reduce the price differential between a conventional car or an ICE, internal combustion engine, and an electric vehicle. Uh, the government had earlier said that they wanted to go all electric by 2030. Then they retreated on that and they said that they want 15 percent of the cars to be electric by 2030. Is that an ambitious target according to you? I think government's target of becoming uh, either 30 percent or all electric is a very ambitious target. But uh, having said that, it's also set a clear direction in the industry what India has, uh, uh, country has to do, what industry has to get prepared for. Whether it is 2030 or 2040 doesn't matter, but the direction is very clear because we have to go towards uh, a sustainable mobility, which EV plays a very vital role in bringing uh, sustainable mobility. So one final question, Mahesh, as we wrap this uh, interview, the future of EV in India, will it be for public transportation and fleet owners and less for private consumption? I think it will start with uh, an adoption in fleet and public transport because it makes economic sense, it makes national sense to reduce pollution, it also makes uh, uh, energy security on import of oil. I think these three fits very well in fleet and public transport. So the adoption of EV to me will start in fleet and public transport and it will then move to private because private you can't uh, ignore uh, private uh, either car buyers or any private uh, vehicle buyers because most of the technology explorations and adoption happens in private. So uh, while I say that it starts with fleet and public, uh, eventually uh, the private uh, car owners or buyers will play a vital role in adoption of EV. Mahesh, thank you very much for your time and speaking to CNBC TV 18's Tech at Work. So lots of interesting insights coming in by Mahindra Electric on the Fame 2 policy, the localization rider set in over there, uh, the challenges which currently the ecosystem face in the form of high upfront costs, uh, the high battery costs and how they are likely to come down in the future, as well as the future of electric vehicles, at least for now, may lie with the public transportation, the government orders, as well as in the local fleet operators where the total cost of ownership at Actually, it makes more sense. Uh, with that, it's curtains down on this episode. Thanks again for tuning in. Do remember to subscribe to our podcast, Tech at Work. They're available on all the platforms where podcasts are consumed, like Apple, Google, Spotify, uh, Audio, Boom, Radiohead. And you can also catch the video on YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and the other social media. Send in your feedback at uh, my Twitter handle, Reema Tanduka. Thanks again for watching. We'll be back with another episode.